Before I start this uh, next episode, uh, I am gravely concerned because of the fact that I exercise my right under the United States Constitution because I am a U.S. citizen. Now, this means I have the right to freedom of press and freedom of speech. With that right, because I am an American citizen. Does that mean, then, I should be disrespected by someone from another country? No. Yeah, I have a right to speak out. If I feel somebody, like a movie star, has wronged me, or disrespected me, or has treated me in a way that I find offensive, as an international incident, and inappropriate, I have a right to speak out. So long as I'm not threatening, or... Um, blackmailing somebody or doing something wrong, then I have a right to speak out. So therefore, this is what I posted in protest. My name is Leslie Ted A. Lechner, a former fan of Emily L. Clark. 
back in February 2017 while watching the Game of Thrones. She made a major impact on my life by her acting skills. But she also acts in a real life, so everyone thinks she's a good person. She never answered any letters or thanked me for gifts and souvenirs of my country. That's an international incident and offense to me. All she talks about in magazines and TV shows is penises, how she's got to be unleashed, or something like that. And that's degrading and immoral. Others have complained and left her because of her true demeanor to fans. It's as if we are supposed to respect her, but she doesn't have to respect us. She either hates the truth when confronted and cuts you off or totally ignores you. She lied about answering fans, as I never got nothing, not even a signed autograph picture from her fan page. It has cost me quite a lot of money, pain, and suffering. I'm tired of remaining silent, and I am going to speak out to the world, as she doesn't deserve this award. If she can't treat someone with dignity and respect in life, how can she be that beautiful and a good actress and character? A true actor or actress doesn't just merely act the part, they must be that character. To that is based on how one treats their fans who supports them. I am going to the Associated Press, newspapers around the world, magazines, radio shows, and if possible, TV stations and talk shows. The truth needs to be revealed. She will fool you with her smile, with all that makeup, and act nice, quote unquote, but that's far from the truth. I see many other actors and actresses who treat their fans a lot better. Amelia Clark is not one of them, and she misrepresents the Mother of Dragons character. If Global Award still gives her an award, then she did good by having the staff wrapped around her finger by acting nice when Global Awards should talk to those who know of another side of her. I think that once she was a nice person when she was a teenager. I confess I was so stupid for believing in her because of her outward appearance. She is not that good looking. True beauty comes within and how one treats a fam or other people. If you act ugly to people, people will speak out as it's their God-given right and thus that person is ugly. Money can't love you back. Not the fame, awards, or marrying a rich person just to have the spotlight on you. When does it end? When people who are rich stop being judged because they are not rich, ignored, cut off when confronted. A true actor or actress will not judge someone. There is no rule book that says an actress or actor can only date an actors who are rich. There are men like me who may not be a Matt Damon or the actor from Titanic or Born Identity movie, but we're still human beings with feelings. She doesn't want a real man, just the wealth. That's improper upbringing, and I was told that Londoners are brought up properly. I won't judge women of London because of Amelia, as she changed to something black and cold on the inside. She is self-centered and cares for no one but herself. When I become an actor, as I intend to not let her evil attitude hold me back, I will get the MA degree to be a better person than her, who doesn't lie on a profile on Wikipedia. If she has to marry in secret or not give an average guy a chance, then she is still judging. I will base my MA degree when I get it on a newfound acting skill called realism. I think people of all walks of life are special, regardless of being handicapped short, or of third lower class. If there was no third lower class, who would put bread and food on her table? Thus, case in point, we deserve better than this. I will start a foundation called STAR, S-T-A-R, Abuse Foundation, for those who feel that people like Emily Clark has abused them in some way, the demoralization of their spirit. I'm not going to remain silent, and I have nothing to lose. I am standing up for humanity. I start with Associated Press to speak out against Amelia and those who fool the world. The truth need to be told, since I never ever got an apology or treated like a decent human being with feelings. Respect is not given, it's earned. And she has not earned my respect, so I don't have to respect her. I saved a copy of this for the media of the world so I can't be slandered or libeled. And if you have heard this award, then I am truly sorry she fooled you. But I will not go quietly in the night. 
I shall continue my crusade till the day I breathe my last, or till such time she becomes woman enough to write me and make a public apology. I bet you dollars to donuts. She won't, and that's her true colors. Inhuman and lies with trickery and deception. The true mother of dragons and said she doesn't believe in trickery, lies, or deception. So HBO made a mistake by having her act the part. Does anyone see Jesus Christ in a Christian film acted by a bank robber? Same analogy and case in point. A proper person of dignity who treats others the way she sh would want to be treated should have been picked. I intend to find the right actress when my movie scripts are approved to portray the Mother Dragons, and she will even, if I have to pay for it, be in all the magazines of the world and replace Emilia, who is a fake. Once a fake, always a fake. But I wanted to speak out for my human rights, for which she greatly insulted, violated, and broke after I learned of how fans are treated. Please know that once I had posted this, then on Facebook, the blackmail began. When I started having hosting my protest, which is guaranteed me under the U.S. Constitution of Freedom of Speech and Press, because obviously there is no threats in any of what you just heard, and I can swear this on her own, she then decided to try to blackmail me and um, claiming that there's some video or something to which I have no knowledge of. And I have always been a, uh, very cautious because at my age, I have my reputation to think of. I always check before posting anything to make sure that it's well understood that as a contributing writer, I'm claiming no rents, royalties, credits, privileges, or otherwise, and otherwise meaning anything I have uncovered, um, that I'm not getting paid for anything that I'm posting. The any material that I use, which I will swear under oath, is mainly to give someone um, the visual effects of how the story would look. So in which case, if I'm not getting any funding from this, how can I be stealing anything? I'm not, because I'm not claiming anything. I would be kind of dumb for doing that. And, uh, you know, that's just not my style. Uh, I was totally shocked at how she retaliated in such a way that was terroristic in nature and putting me in fear, which when according to the international law and the law of my country, when you put somebody in fear with a threat, that's the same as a terrorist threat. And I won't deal with that. I don't care if you're from Great Britain or the land of Shaka Zulu. That's not going to happen. And I say that only in a snide way because I'm very displeased on how Emilia has portrayed herself. So here's what the comments started. I don't have my responses, but I'm sure that I can provide the proof by using print screen skills from my BCTI diploma, which I had earned the Dean's List four times, to prove it else in court of law as well as in public for anyone who wants the interview and to see the evidence. It begins. Then I see that you do not want to finish with this story here. You want to show all the world. So start me. I'll also rot you life. When I had responded, then I swear on my mother's head that I will rot you life. You'll end up like this guy. And she sends me two photos, two or three photos, I guess, of people that are in prison. Now my question is, did she have a hand in it? Because she couldn't have her way? Or is it just more or less using a picture just to say this is what's going to end up to you? Well, I defended myself verbally because I have nothing to fear. She puts, if you do not want to believe that I will can, can destroy your life, with this video of you, play the cunt with me and you will see what I am capable. This is her own language. Why would she speak like that? Okay. My question is, does the Queen of England tolerate her own citizens acting like this? I mean, seriously? I mean, because I thought that Great Britain and the United States were supposed to be allies. I mean, that's just my opinion. You know, I don't think we have any grievances on a political basis. And I'm sure even the president who I voted for, Donald Trump, would agree this is inappropriate behavior for someone from Great Britain. 
just because you're a movie star doesn't put you above the law. Uh, many famous stars like basketball players, if they uh, avoided paying the IRS tax, you think they didn't get in trouble. They didn't care about how whether a star or not. If you break the law, you have to pay the piper. Again, if you do not want to believe that I will can destroy you, you life with this video of you play the cunt with me and you will see that I am capable. So begins the moment. Me, I have all on you, even the infos on you. Also, your family, my friends of your father will see this video of you as you think it is a game. Again, threatening my family, that's a terrorist attack. I do not want to rot your life, but you just put me in collision against I'll derange you in all your life looks. Then remain calm and pay the sum of $1,800 and I delete this video if you want the story to stay here. We finish for good. Again, blackmailing me for money. For what video? So go and finish it and show it to your video. Otherwise, it will go bad for you. So if you do not want to cooperate, let fall. We'll do what you can do. Ha, 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 ha. Then if you finish to do the betise, we'll make the mandate. Send me the receipt of the mandate and says it says goodbye included. It keeps going on. Um, then I do not want to see the silly messages, so we'll make the money transfer and I delete a video on YouTube with Daily Motion. Okay, so one... Um, Eventually, I ask her where the video is at. More threats and blackmail. You think this is my first time do, to do VCE? I didn't understand what it was, so I had her clarify. You think this is my first time okay. doing this? So that's like confessing that she's blackmailed people before, and why didn't Global Awards even notice that had they checked her background, maybe it's because nobody was brave enough to stand up to her. I am. I am an American citizen, and I don't take threats from you, Amalia. So if you think you got something, go ahead and bring it. But whose reputation will really be destroyed? Yours, because you confessed to blackmailing people before? Or mine, the victim of your terroristic actions and threats, and to blackmail me that I should pay you $1,800 for a video that you can't even produce to prove? She goes on. You make the mandate, and buy. Well... I had to, uh, again, ask her about the video. I say, well, do the mandate of 1800 and I delete the video included. You make the mandate and buy. Um, once again, I say, well, to do the 1800 and delete the video included. Finally, she says, I can't show you right now, but when you're going to play you the con, I swear to rot you life. I tried to talk to her civilly and find out why it is that she doesn't she acted in this way, trying to be like what you call the diplomatic person because I had high hopes for her. And she was the special star that would be unlike any other movie star, not that any others were bad, as to what could possibly happen to make her act in such a way. Usually when someone tells a movie star that, you know, hey, you know, you made a good impact on my life and I'm highly motivated and inspired by you, the stars usually say, thank you. You know, that's really nice. My name's Emily Clark. Tell me how I made an uh, impact on your life. You see how easy that is? It's called appropriate behavior. It's where you thank somebody for complimenting you, not retaliating. And if somebody feels that you're not um, acting in a way that would be normal, you know, to appreciate how they've complimented you, you don't attack them. Obviously, if I've done anything wrong, you can always ignore or, by all means, file a complaint. But do you think any attorney is going to defend an action when you black, try to blackmail me $1,800 and then make threats to my family? No, I will not remain silent. So, I'm sorry, Amelia, but it don't matter how long it takes. I will speak out. You want to make a go of it? Fine. I shall sue for $50 billion. And so, I hope you have that. Maybe I just slap a lien on the California property when I win the court case, and then I'll get paid my compensation that way. Or you can settle out of court. I really don't care. But you're a terrorist, and you're not a professional actress. You have demoralized me, humiliated me, disrespected me, 
treated me badly, and that's an international incident. Now, I have a lot of respect for the Queen of England and Prince Charles and everybody else, and I have no reason to lie. I could print screen everything that you sent me, and I have saved it. Therefore, I have the evidence. You can't even produce a videotape that I've done something wrong. I can bring also all the videos that I have posted, and it will show that I haven't said or done anything to steal anybody's rights or um, uh, what's that, royalties or anything. In fact, all I did to speak from the heart, and yet I'm the one that's cut off at the knees. This is not how the mother of guys would have acted either. That's treachery. And therefore you have, are the wrong person for that part. But that's okay. Because, like I said, I have nothing to lose. In my country, I have another old saying, you can't get blood out of a turnip. Therefore, I don't have $1,800 to give you. If you feel you're not getting enough by being an actress, maybe you should complain to the director or the producer. And since you freely admitted with a question, that I was to think that you haven't done this before, that should show everybody that there's criminal activity on your part. So you've kind of dug your own hole. So the only way you can get out of the situation is you can either publicly apologize and write me a letter of an apology, or you can resign from acting. I think that would be a fair assumption, but the ball is in your court. And I'm pretty sure Donald Trump, the president who I voted for, that believes in the defense of making America great again will not even tolerate somebody from another country disrespecting American citizens. Um, I know that, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Queen of England, who I have also much respect for, is not going to tolerate a citizen in her country doing such a thing, regardless of whether you're a movie star or not. But that's entirely up to you. I have nothing to fear. I am Dragon Sphere, and I also yeah, will be taking my birthright back because I am a Highlander and I have nothing to lose. I am a allowed by my constitutional laws, I don't know how it is in your country, to speak freedom of speech and freedom of press. You could have easily just chose to ignore it. Well, when you had to stoop to the level to break the law, no, you are not above the law. It becomes an international incident. So now the question is. When one offends from another from another country with threatening ways about their family and $1,800 blackmail, that is an incident for Interpol and or possibly a terrorist threat. Because if it puts terror in somebody and makes them afraid, that's what terrorists do. A terrorist doesn't just have to be somebody from ISIS. It can be anybody. It could be somebody British. It could be somebody African. It could be somebody Italian. It's how you carry yourself and the way you carry yourself. And by carrying yourself this way, no, I will not keep quiet. And I'm sure the federal government will be on my side because when they read the evidence I have, I am the victim, not you. I never once threatened you. I had high respect for you. And I never once blackmailed you for anything. So who is the victim? I guess I am. But that was just totally shocking. I I guess the real Emilia is probably long since gone. That's my opinion, which all the Constitution allows me to have. I don't know what happened in your past life, and I'm sorry that you have these feelings or have to attack somebody and feel you have to blackmail them, especially since you've already confessed to doing it more than once. Anyway, I wish you the best of life, and I will post what I want. You should, can either choose not to read it, or just ignore it, but that's entirely up to you. In the next episode, Episode 8, Memories and Blessings of Hope, Tyrion makes a marital commitment. He has fallen in love with Marcella, and she has fallen in love with him. She doesn't care to how short he is. And because she's not one to judge one of size, looks, or age, they become quite the couple. And so with this, unlike the one he had once long, long ago been in love with, she does not do the treacheries to him. This greatly attracts him to her. And they eventually become married. 
as husband and wife. In the meantime, the Summer Islands um, warrior ladies, led by their female leader, makes good on a promise made to the um, queen, uh, or the former queen Margie's mother, that once they had aided her in also joining the faction to installing the uh, new king, a cousin to former King Thomas who committed suicide at the time when he lost his wife through the great explosion of the Faith of the Seven Temple, and his older wife, um, they uh, declare that now that all has done, it is time for them to collect what is rightfully due them as well. In turn, the uh, Lady Tyrell, mother of deceased Queen Margie, pays in good coin to the Summer Islands Queen, who is also the leader of the Lady Warriors. They have much friendship and respect for each other, and so they allow her to leave in peace, as she feels all has been justified and done, though she was disappointed she could not have the life um, of the Queen Mother. She is still satisfied that she is not going to be the one on the throne. Then it goes into um, another scene where eventually the body of Viserys is discovered with a melted crown around his head. The scene, of course, would be a little bit grotesque, but they managed to get the go melted gold off his head. And because it is su such a degrading way for him, the way they found him, and again, in this world, people don't decompose like that of the homeworld of Earth, of this mysterious person that will arrive. So they put in a respectable manner a proper crown around his head with somewhat of a type of veil or covering to hide the markings of um, that which killed him, of the burning hate and the sensation of the molten gold that her former king Drogo had poured on his head. He is returned home, and those who followed him give him a ceremony of, of much honor, and is laid to rest below the stones of the backyard garden of the uncle, and a memorial is set up for him. They put his sword in a special holding place of the uh, memorial, so that he will be remembered and respected. He was to be the ruler long, long ago, but because the history of how he had too early gotten greedy for the power, much like Daenerys, who had done it subtly, it was his own undoing right off from the get-go, and he didn't really treat his sister that well nicely either. Eventually, the scene then switches to the Dragonstone Refuge. Littlefinger comes across Sansa, Ariana and Bren. They don't turn him away, but they're kind of reluctant in trusting him because he has been known to, if the price is right, turn to the other side. And so they more or less become acquainted friends, and eventually they do accept him because he too is somewhat of a refuge. Had he been caught, he might have been done away with by the new House of Lannis king. So he now takes refuge in Dragonstone to do whatever he can to turn a few coins here and there. Not that he's completely poor, because he would, well, he just, it would be beyond him to be in such a staff status. So he starts up his own type of uh, business for single men and women. And not that Sansa would uh, associate with somebody like this or ever go to one of those places. They merely keep their fr uh, friendship on a professional basis. And thus is, ends the episode for eight memories and blessings of hope. In the meantime, um, the leader of the Summer Islands, uh, Lady Warriors, sends another person who has not yet made an appearance, but is somewhat, has some kind of royal or um, 
type of political uh, connection to do a special secret rescue mission of Greyjoy's sister. Of course, she will be somewhat in exile, but at least she won't be in the hands of <clears throat> the current king of the Iron Islands. So she t brings her and tells her that she has to go on a secret mission. She accepts this because she does still know some skill of stealth and how to get in and out of places without being noticed. She then accepts the assignment and after some time, as the scene will switch, she finally arrives at the Iron Islands, making sure nobody is looking. When she finally finds where the location is of the Greyjoy's sister, she makes sure that she remains silent. The uh, Greyjoy's sister then asks her, why is she here? And she says, I am here to get you out, but you must remain silent, or lest we both be caught and both be killed. She understands this, and while she finds a way of working her out of her holding area, finally, with some much success, she finally gets her out, and they finally flee at very, very early morning, before the sun comes up. <clears throat> Eventually, the uh, king is notified by a messenger that apparently she's not in her cell, and he's not very happy about this at all. They look all over the island, but cannot seem to find her. This means somebody had to know something about her location and was able to get her out. He swears that he will not rest until he makes sure that she cannot speak against him because he intends to hold the throne of the Iron Islands. In the meantime, there's not much he can do about Greyjoy himself because he's already uh, in the hands of the Bolton. Uh, uh, relative who has taken over the uh, f former nephew's position, though he did treachery against his father, to be holding the Bolton throne, which uh, took away from Sansa's uh, legal claim to have the throne for Winterfell. Back at the Dragonstone Island, Sansa then states, you know, and questions are asked, that had there been some way to warn um, Jon Snow of the things that were about to happen, perhaps none of this would have been allowed. But then again, the strangers in strange armor from beyond the known world had the upper hand. And obviously, she accepts the fact that Daenerys was not going to about to risk her dragons being slain, because then she wouldn't be the mother of dragons if they were killed. So, Littlefinger tells her some words of wisdom that when one is like a uh, pretty much a prey in tall grass, one does not make loud noises or sudden movement lest the lion should discover their whereabouts and pounce upon them and tear them apart. Even Bran finds wisdom in this, and all three of the surviving Stark family members accepts this. The only thing Bran can do with his vision of foresight is inform Littlefinger that Jon Snow is alive and well, but if there is a child, the child he has taken, and he has resided to solitude, so not much can be done in regards to this. And so with that having been said, that means then who knows when they'll ever hear from him again. Arya feels that, you know, something should have been done, but realizes that perhaps this would have been their own undoing as well. So she has to accept the fact that she also is in refuge so that she is not caught. But because she is great with the sword that she carries, she is considered to be the protector of her older sister and Bren. Littlefinger assures her that he has much respect for her because she is one to stand up for what is right. And therefore, um, that as long as they do not draw attention to themselves, they should be safe in Dragonstone because one sometimes can hide out in the open when no one would expect them to. Therefore, hiding in the open, no one sees anything. 
just because of words of wisdom, and they do accept this. Meanwhile, finally, after much effort, the other lady from the Summer Islands returns with Greyjoy's sister and presents her to the leading lady of the female warriors. Greyjoy's sister seems well pleased and thanks her for much for having spared her of the continuous torturous life that was going to be put upon her so that she couldn't speak against the Iron Island's king. In the meantime, she gives a full report to the leader that all went well and they were able to leave before the sunrise. Greyjoy's sister seems very angry that all has happened and asks if anybody's heard of anything of either Jon Snow or Daenerys. The one that was sent to save her assures her that they have heard nothing about Jon Snow and if there was a child that had been conceived prior to the marriage no one knows anything about this as well. But then again, as far as she has heard, Daenerys has taken retreat for the very first time in her life because she's always been one who has come out victorious because there was nothing she could do. She couldn't use her dragons. One third of the Dothraki were killed and the rest didn't want to get wiped out. So as the Iron Islands king was bombarding the ships, they managed to escape while one third of the ships, including Daenerys' fl proud flagship, was burned at sea. Greyjoy's sister is not happy with this at all, so she wonders what can she do. The best advice she gets is to not make sudden movements because this could draw attention to herself and then her work of getting her freed from her captivity would have been for nothing. So it then switches back to Marine. Daenerys is standing outside on the pyramid balcony and had summoned the uh, visionary because even though he's not one to be the palace um, uh, dignitary who gives words of wisdom or advice, but it's because of the prophecies he has seen in his uh, uh, visions that she wishes to ask him about things that she has also seen last night. The visionary finally appears, and you have summoned me, and she then turns, yes, I need to know what uh, this means when I was awoken by a bright light last night. It was like a bright blue dark star. The visionary then seems <clears throat> to be amazed that she had been awoken by this. And she assures him that Masani had first, her handmaiden, seen it first, then noticed that she was also up. And he explains to her, perhaps we should sit down and talk about it. So she does. He tells her that the star that she's seen is the next most assured sign that the stranger from Dark Blue Star has already went through the prophesied catastrophic event. It's only a matter of time before he shows now, and he will come with much sorrow when reality hits him in the face before he tries to act boldly, that though he tried to save many people of his kind, one third of his planet, probably in the billions, have been killed by another solar system alien to his own. He continues then and lets her know that he will have much sorrow, and this is where you will awaken the sleeping dragon, because he will wake up with such a nightmare, and when you give the mere touch of your hand to his chest, you will calm him, and he will feel safe in your arms. I do not know why, but you will somehow comfort him in some way, and you will have another vision. He will dream about a big red dragon who stands on the shore as a gray dragon comes out of water. Symbolically, again, symbolism being everything, you will come to appreciate the things he explains to you. She seems fascinated and has him continue. The vision that he will explain to you is the fact that you are the red dragon because you are the female dragon, the mother dragons, you are the stronger. 
and the gray dragon from another world will be found along the shore. Therefore, the symbolism is already explained. But he will be a submissive and respectable dragon and will yield to you and you will accept him his yield because he will swear his life to defend you even if it means his very own life and you will come to accept him because of the fact that he yields to your ruling and will obey any command that you give. She finally stands, goes to the balcony and looks at him. So this dark blue star then means that the stranger who will lead me to the Iron Throne, once and for all, is due to arrive then. She has a big smile about this. Yes, my queen. Most assuredly, his arrival will be in a timely manner that will be to much anticipation and excitement. I believe, since we have the same senses, more than that of this person who will come to the world, that... Your uncle once said you took care of pets. <laughs> she kind of laughs about this as he continues uh, explaining. And that you will come to set him as a pet, but you will not allow to get him into the palace, so you will send two guards to retrieve him for you. As she faces the balcony, he tells her one last thing. All that has ha come to pass will continue right to the very end. And you will accept him. And... He will respect you as much as you respect him. You will accept each other, and he will be the one to lead you to great victory. If there's nothing else, I shall go ahead and take my leave then. So she dismisses him and then continues looking over the kingdom of Marine. Everything that she has seen seems to be going well. Everything in the prophecy coming true. Now it's only a matter of time for her just to wait to see when the stranger, Dragon's Hair, appears from the dark blue star in the Valerian night sky.
This is an official notice to protect myself from terroristic slander and libel by Emilia Clark with the blackmail attempt that she had done. Again, as I have done before, I claim no rents, credits, royalties, privileges, or otherwise, and otherwise meaning anything I have not already covered, of any pictures, the title Game of Thrones, or screenshots used. The purpose of search usage is what I call visualization to give the uh, description of how the scene setting would be, and thus I am not gaining anything profit-wise from it. Nor do I claim any uh, credit for such uh, screenshots. The other thing, too, is that any such actor photos, I claim no credit on it either, which falls under the term other of my sworn oath. It is merely a suggestion of the cast members, I think, that would and uh, could make a good team in the uh, prequel, or what would have normally been uh, Series 9, that links the final Series 8 of the Game of uh, or the Game of Thrones to that of the motion picture. So I just wanted to clear this for the record, and it will stand ground legally, because until one can prove that I'm wearing brand new clothes, I bought a Ferrari, not that I'm trying to be sarcastic about it, but that's like basically it, and I do not have any cars, vehicles, or new clothing to show for, then what have I gained? To gain something means that my living status would have changed both style and clothing, and a vehicle, new furniture, or something. Since that cannot be proven, then I have broken no laws, either state, federal, or internationally. So, this is my sworn oath under penalty of perjury, given this 22nd day of April, 2017.